Let's check out what this queen is doing. No way! She's dead? Oh no! Another one? Now I see. The first worker ants have hatched. But are they to blame? Let's find out what happened in part 2 of our queen ant experiment. Hello and welcome or welcome back to the Ant Vienna Ant Channel. If you are watching us for the first time, here we discuss and help you out with everything you need to know when you keep ants as pets. A few weeks ago, we started an experiment, an ant experiment. For this, we introduced 13, yes, 13 Lazius Flavos Quinans to an acrylic ant farm where we can easily watch them and see what happens. All in the name of science. For you see, in science, there is no wishful outcome. Just plain facts. What happens, happens. With that in mind, the goal of the formicarium we created in the previous video, I'll put an info card in the top for you guys, feel free to check it out later, was merely to observe the behavior of the quinans and subsequently what happens before and after the first workers hatch out of their pupa. I shall continue by sharing my highly scientific observations I made over the course of the last 10 weeks with you guys. And while I do so, a like to this video would help it out with the algorithm and let me know that you like it and want me to continue covering this colony. So, on week 1 of our experiment, we started with 13 Lazius Flavos Quinans. From those, we had 5 that had shed their wings, aka were confirmed fertile, and 8 that still had their wings, which means these 8 could be infertile, but not necessarily. In the beginning, there were around 3 groups of 3 to 6 queens in various chambers of the ant nest. However, towards the end of this first week, the queens started forming one big group that was mainly positioned at the bottom middle chamber where most of the humidity from the watering process gathers. Now, on day 7, all quinans were still alive. I also noticed a huge egg bunch in that chamber. It must definitely have been the work of more than 5 queens. Small side note, I also noticed that one queen was wandering off alone in the corner of the nest. One week later, on day 13, the queen that was alone sadly died, most probably due to infertility. I can confirm that no fights had happened between the queens at this point in time. On the happy end, some of the eggs that were laid the week before had now turned into larva. So progress was being made. After three weeks, namely day 21, the remaining 12 queens were still alive and well. Noticeable at this point was that some of the ant queens were breaking and partially biting off their wings. Also, a significant amount of eggs, I'd say around 80%, had turned into larva by now. Are you still with me guys? Okay. Four weeks in, on day 27, a few of the larva are getting really big, a very good sign. But an interesting turn of events was that now almost every queen had taken some of the larva in her personal care, unwilling to share them with the others, watching carefully over them. 
precious. So the huge brood pile that was previously positioned in the middle of this big chamber was gone and many individual larva packs had been formed. Are you enjoying the video? Then hit the thumbs up button. It helps my work get recognized by YouTube and is a totally free way for you to support my work, which took multiple weeks in the case of this video. Let's continue. During the next six weeks, the trend of not sharing the brood vastly continued. There were, however, also cases of two queens getting along and sharing a single brood pile. Speaking of brood, we now see brood in all stages, eggs, larva and pupa, ready to hatch. Finally, on week 9, around 10 days before making this video, the first worker ant emerged. Look how pale she is! She must have hatched not too long ago, since she is still not moving much and waiting for her exoskeleton to harden. Adorable! Only a few days later, more workers had entered the scene, and with them the decapitation of one quinant. Were the newly hatched workers responsible for her death? It is a possibility. After all, worker ants can distinguish which queen ants are fertile and which are not. So naturally, the queens that drag the colony growth down by consuming resources without producing offspring are sorted out. Further strengthening the point that workers did this is the fact that prior to the workers being born, there were practically no fights between the queens. By now I probably sound like Conan the detective, don't I? Ok, all jokes aside, unlike their sister counterpart, Lasius Niger, Lasius Flavus do not show intraspecies aggression and do not exercise fights over domination of the colony like a strictly monogenous ant species does. To conclude the timeline of this experiment, as I am writing the script of this video, there are 11 queens alive and a total of 8 workers have hatched and are now searching for food, which I provided them in the form of sugar and honey water droplets within the nest. They gladly accepted my offer and turned over to start feeding all the hungry larvae that are still growing. A notable fact, at least in my eyes, is that some workers show slight signs of aggression towards certain quinants. Will these queens turn into more victims? To how many queens can a worker ant be loyal to? AKA, how many queens will remain in the end, as this polygynous queen ant colony continues to grow? What do you think? Were the findings and what happened so far in our ant experiment interesting for you? Do you want me to continue covering the progress of this ant colony? Let me know down in the comments, I read and answer them all. Speaking of comments, I've recently been asked to make an ant room tour, which ties well with the upcoming hibernation period. So, in our next video, I will show you guys all of my ant colonies that will be going into hibernation. Subscribe with the bell icon if you don't want to miss that video and don't be afraid to ask me about things you want to see next on Ants Vienna because I am listening to your comments. You might also want to check out the videos that appear on your screen right now. I'll see you there.